As a matter of fact, this is the smallest seed that we really have. It's the mustard seed. But in Matthew 17, 20, it reads, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will tell this mountain to move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. So I want you to keep that in mind this morning. Just a mustard seed faith. The title of the message today is A Mother's Faith. Amen. And I will be coming from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through 37. It is long, but necessary. And it reads, Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shun, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table, a chair, and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and turned in to the upper room and lay down there. Mm -hmm. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us, and with all this care, what can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own. So she said, and Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he called her again, she stood in the doorway, and then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord. Man of God, do not lie to me. Your maid, sir. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. <coughs> so she said to the servant, so he said to the servant, carry him to his mother. That's just like a man. <laughs> When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees to noon and died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. And then she called her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither new moon or the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward and do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant, the hostess, look, the Shulamite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with your child? And she answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told her. So she said, Did I ask a son of you, my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to the heart, Get yourself ready, and take my staff in your hand, and be on your way. If you meet any
anyone, do not greet them. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet them and told them, saying, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child laying dead on the bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, and his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes, and he recalled Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her. And when she came into him, he picked up, he said, Pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. And then she picked up her son and went out. Now we're talking about a mother's faith this morning. If this is not a good example of a mother's faith, I don't know what is. The woman, the Shunammite woman, was a very prominent woman, which means she was important, well-known, well-respected, very influential. And yet with all of this and everything that she had going on, she still did not have a child. Amen. She did not know who Elisha was at first, because he would just come by. Mm -hmm. And her being the person that she was, very kind and loving, she established that relationship with him, not knowing that later on, this would be the very person who would cause a miracle in her life. Several things I find interesting in the story. He told her that by this time next year, mm -hmm. when he stopped by, or some of the scriptures say this season, so I just want to let you know this morning that there is a time and there is a season for everything. Amen. Yes. 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 Things happen when God plans for them to happen. Yes. We may want them today, but God may say, it's not your season. Mm -hmm. So the thing that we need to do is remain faithful. Mm -hmm. This is all it takes, mm -hmm. according to the word. Mm -hmm. It's just faith the size of a mustard seed. Also, when the mother, um, when the child was brought to the mother, the mother put the child in her lap, and the child died around noon. The mother did not address the situation. Not one time did she say the child was dead until she got to the man's house. Mm -hmm. She didn't bother her husband with the situation. She took things in her own hand and she said, I'll handle it, just send me a servant. <coughs> Saddled the donkey herself and then went on her way. But the interesting thing about the mother's actions to me was when she took the child and laid the child on the man of God's bed, why did she put the child on her own bed? <coughs> she laid him on the man of God's bed and then she shut the door. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in life, you will have to handle your own situation. You will have to take things to your own hand. You will not be able to consult anyone else at the moment. You will not be able to bother someone else. You can't always call someone else to help you with the situation. And this is what she did. So she shut the door. We sometimes have to shut that door. Amen. Mm -hmm. On situations that don't feel good, yes. don't look good, yes. and they're not good. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time when you'll need to know when you shut the door. Mm -hmm. And the child and the mother was the only two in the house. So why was there a need to shut the door? Mm -hmm. I think she was shutting the door on that situation, saying, I'm going to leave it just like it is, and I'll be back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But when she gets to the man of God, of course, he sees her from a far off and she is serving out the pastor. Is it well? Was it well? The child was dead. It didn't say that the child went to sleep. She brought the child to sleep. It said the child died around noon. But yet she refused to say what it was. Sometimes we have to refuse to say what it is, what it looks like, and what it feels like. Just remain faithful and know that it is well. In James 2, 26, it says, faith without works is dead. The mother definitely put her faith to work in this situation. So we must have total confidence in the power of God's word. Mark 11, 23 says, we can have whatsoever we say. And Luke 18 and 1 says, we must always pray and not give up. Many of us are sitting here today because of a mother's faith. It was your mother, your grandmother, aunt, sister. Someone prayed for you. Very important. And I would like to say to the younger mothers, we can always learn from the older ones. That's where we get our wisdom and our understanding. Many times, I'm sure, those mothers had to pray for their children Amen. when the children would not do what they had been taught to do. But yet that mother remained faithful, steadfast, keep your hands in God's hands. And God is the only one who can change the situation. Although Elisha prophesied to the Shunammite woman, it was God's will that she had the son. Amen. <laughs> Only his will. And then when Elisha returns and, of course, goes in to check on the child, he also shut the door mm -hmm. and prayed to God. God is the only one that can turn that situation. Amen. We pray about things and we ask for things, but God knows what we need. Amen. And sometimes we don't always need what we're praying. Amen. So thank God for all those doors yes. that shut yes. <laughs> that we try to open. Yes. And all those doors that open that we try to shut. Amen. It works both ways. Elisha knew that the child was a promised child that was prophesied through him mm -hmm. by God. And that's why Elisha prayed to the Lord and asked for an answer. So whatever circumstances we face today, we can just remember that it is well. And um, Isaiah 65 and 24, the New Living Translation, I love this verse. It says, I will answer them before they even call me. Amen. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Isn't that good to know that God go before them? It's like the verse that says, He will go before you and make all the crooked places straight. Had, not, had God not gone before us in many, many situations, those crooked places would not have been made straight. Amen. So we thank Him on today for just taking care of us and loving us and keeping us and just covering us with His precious blood. Amen. He loves us so much. Yes, He does. Then the contemporary English version says, same chapter, Isaiah 65, 24, I will answer their prayers before they finish praying. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. While we're praying, God is already in. Isn't it good to know that God has already taken care of everything for us? Mm -hmm. We just have to exercise our grain of mustard seed faith. Mm -hmm. So we need to make seeking God a priority. And always take time to thank Him for blessing us and keeping us. Thank Him for all those times He had your back. And we need to always make sure we make room for God. Amen. He took the 
come and hang on that cross. Yes, he did. He didn't have to hang on the cross. Mm -hmm. He could have come down at any time. Mm -hmm. But because he cares for us, he loves us, he appreciates us, mm -hmm. then we need to make sure that we spend time with him. Spend time with him. Spend time with your family. Spend time with your loved ones. Very important. Amen. I know we have a lot going on today. Many of us are working and trying to uh, juggle that career, mm -hmm. family, business, for those business owners. But in this busy world, we need to make sure that we take time out to thank the one who has allowed us to just be here. Amen. We have to deal with those types of situations. Because if it was not for God, we wouldn't be here. And I know that. And don't change your confession. Whatever you believe, you stick to it. When that mother is praying for her child, she's believing that everything is going to be okay. It's very important. Encourage your children. Don't talk now. Amen. Support them. Be there for them. And when they don't do everything you want them to do, because they will not, we didn't either. Amen. <laughs> if we be honest, those of us who are older, we did not dot every I and cross every T. But God didn't turn his back on Amen. us. He continued to love us, stand by us, and that's why we're here today. Amen. So for all the mothers, be thankful for your children that work both ways. Amen. Take time to tell them that you love them. Spend time with them. Give them those nuggets of wisdom that they're going to need it. Whether they think so or not. You know how we are. I think we're grown. I got it all figured out. <laughs> well, we don't have it all figured out. Amen. As you will soon learn as you grow older. Ashley. <laughs> we're going to need those. Amen. And back to a mother's faith. There's nothing like a mother to work you. She raised you, spent time with you. In many cases, she nursed you. She's the one you're going to go to when you have those wounds. Amen. Whether they're physical, mental, emotional. When people let you down, She's that one person you can always go to and talk to when your friends are not there. You can always go to your mother. So don't forget that. Mothers are very, very special. God loves us. Don't let nobody tell you that. Amen. He doesn't love you. I don't care what you've done. I don't what, care what situation you've been in. Nothing surprises God. He knows what we're going to do before Long before we do it. But He still loves He still loves He's a forgiving God. Yes, He is. He's a loving God. Yes. A trusting God. Trusting God. And we have to display those same characteristics. Amen. With those who we associate with. We have to love people. We need to forgive. We have to give quickly. Amen. Don't let it take you a season to forgive somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the time is now. So I'd like to leave this with you on today. Don't spend more time remembering what happened than what God's Word says about you. Your best days are yet to come, Amen. according to Job 87. It says your latter years will be greater than your former. God is a miracle giver. Yes, he is. Elisha had performed many miracles for those of you who are familiar with Elisha. Many miracles. With the help of God. Miracles are still happening today. In fact, we were sitting here to some miracles. Amen. People said, well, I don't see a lot of miracles going on nowadays. <laughs> they breathe. Amen. That's a miracle. There's some people who are not breathing on their own. They're breathing with help. help yes. our sheep. So the fact that we're here, we're healthy, we have the ability to come and sit and just be among each other mm -hmm. and experience this Mother's Day 
is truly a blessing. a blessing. And for all of those who came to share this day with your mother, thank you very much. That is also a blessing. In Hebrews 13, 5, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We know that to be true. Yes. Sometimes it seems like God has left us, but he has not left us. He is going to always be there for us. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Don't live by your own power or understanding. No, live by my spirit within you. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, in all your time. And he will direct for you. Okay. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, You have been saved by grace. Yes. We thank God for hanging on the cross. Amen. If not, it will be totally different for us today. Mm -hmm. Because he loved us. Mm -hmm. He went to the cross. Mm -hmm. yes. Romans 5 and 1 says, You have been justified by faith. Mm -hmm. By faith. All the mothers in here have exercised faith at some point in time in your life. And they, like I said, they didn't look good, mm -hmm. they didn't feel good, and they were not. Amen. But you refused to give up. And, he said, and because you refused to give up, mm -hmm. you are here today as a witness to those of us who know that it was only by faith. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law were the call when their son was in a car accident. It was bad. It was bad. But I know there were some prayers that went up. We ask ourselves sometimes why do things happen in this situation and it doesn't happen in another situation. I don't have that answer. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can say is just have faith. We have to trust God. Mm -hmm. We don't know what His plans are. We don't know why things happen. Amen. We don't know why the end result doesn't always turn out the way we want it to turn out. But the thing, one thing you do know is that God is in control. Yes. 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 All yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So on today, St. Luke family, if you do not remember anything else, I want you to remember that this is all awesome. 